does he reside? Where does he sleep? Where does he sleep? Where does she sleep? Okay, we're trying to break apart our graph and identify where these things belong. So the if is telling you the, where they go. All right? Brennan stays in the bathroom <laughs> if he has a bellyache. Okay? Whatever. We're saying where they go. All right? So right now, I want us to simply concentrate on splitting up these things and writing them in y equals mx plus b form. Remember, this is the same thing as y, correct? Yeah. So these are three equations. They're just all combined into one expression. This is y equals x, y equals 2, y equals this. And I'm graphing all three of these on the same graph, but only in specific locations. Okay? So my if statement tells me where my walls exist. So if you look at your if statement, it says if, and don't worry about all the less than, negative, blah, 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 just look at the numbers. If we've got negative three, what's the number we've got? One, okay? So the, the walls exist at negative three and one. This one comes up first, this one comes in the middle, and this one goes on the other end. All right? So we want to graph these lines, but we only want to graph them in their respective locations. Now, y equals x is the graph. This is an identity function. Because the slope is 1 and the y-intercept is 0. Okay? Because we went over that yesterday. And you took a quiz on it this morning. All right. But it only exists, I only want to draw it on this side of my wall. Okay? Well, I'm going to have to lightly trace it here to figure out where it goes. Because I'm lightly doing it. And then it picks up here. Okay? If it's crossing at zero, and I know this is an identity function, it doesn't exist, doesn't exist, oh, now it's in its respective location. It only exists here. How are you doing? Oh, God. We don't like to ask. <laughs> because the book told me something. What is this the graph of? What is this the graph of? A, I know it's y equals 2. What's it the graph of? A horizontal line going through the y-axis at 2. Okay? But it only shows up here. So, where is the horizontal line going through 2? It's here, but I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. Oh, now I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Oh, it's gone. Yay. We're not going to worry about that yet. Okay, we'll go back to the circles in a second. Here, this is the this is a line that crosses the y-axis where at positive two. All right, so it crosses here and it has a slope of down two over one, which means from here it would go down two over one, right? So this line comes here, here, we don't see it, we don't see it, we don't see it, we don't see it yet. Oh, now we see it. And there it is. Can I do the next one? Now. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. I, I, I'm confused. I get it. Wait, I have one question. For y equals x, you don't have to do like 1x plus 0 and then do 1 over 1. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay, okay. now let's look
On this side, the restriction was less than. This function, open circle. Here, the restriction was less than, uh, less than or equal to, right here. So there is an a closed circle. But on this side, it was simply this, open circle. Here, the symbol was greater than or equal to. So we closed the circle. I think if you like did two different colors, you would understand. Use regular. No, I wouldn't make different colors. Yeah, the colors are Yeah, blue, blue doesn't matter. Why did I put what? Right here? Because, see, here is the line, but it doesn't exist until it shows up right here. It is on one, because that's where the line goes. That's because it crossed here, and then the slope said to go down two and over one. So my line comes through this point. Y equals mx plus b. The slope is negative two over one. This is rise over run. This tells me to go down. This tells me to go right. I really want to have four. Yes. Which one? This one? Because it exists when x is greater than or equal to 1. It exists on the right hand side of this wall. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Everybody hush, everybody hush, everybody hush. First, and let's see, there are no more. Um, I will get some. That's the greatest integer function, which is the only thing I want you to know about the greatest integer function is what it looks like and that it's an example of a step function. We're not going to be graphing that, okay? We're going to be graphing piecewise functions, and absolute value functions. All right, and obviously today we're not going to get to absolute value functions. We'll do that tomorrow. But let's keep going with the piecewise functions. Okay, I'll just create my own. I have no idea now. The if statements tell you where your walls exist. Right, negative four and four, okay? So you start by drawing your walls, negative four and four. You draw your graph and you put your little dotted lines to show where your walls exist because you don't want to cross the walls. Which one, okay, so now we're going to just say the left, the middle, and the right. Which one exists all the way to the left? The first, the second, or the third one? The first, the first, the the first one. The first. Less than negative four is to the left.